and now our Zoom's recording, right? Yeah, it is. Julian, what's up, my friend? Dude. Julian Baker, that's your full name. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been? Dude? Uh, I, mean, I mean, I've been pretty all right, you know? Yeah. It's uh, it's uh, That's an interesting question that I oh, feel, God, I know. if you're like me, you're asked a lot, and um, <laughs> it's the, the pinball machine of my brain tries to... Sure. come up with the right answer and there is one is not one so oh god that is like... a delicious piece of imagery um, thank you because i get it um yeah also man yeah i was i was speaking to someone the other day that <laughs> was like i feel like we need a new intro to like every time i send an email i'm like oh yeah how are you it's like i hope this email finds you well it's absolutely. always like i have two very <laughs> crossed fingers every time i send it but what's funny is like that's such a cliched thing that i uh, i notice people make fun of a lot which i didn't used to send but i actually legitimately mean it when i whenever i put it in an email uh, i literally mean I hope this email finds you well. <laughs> you know? yeah, I uh, hope this email doesn't find you in the worst of circumstances. In the worst of circumstances. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm very lucky to, uh, I'm, I'm not sick. Uh, no one in my family has gotten sick. Uh, they've been like working through this in, uh, you know, front facing positions the whole time. So like very lucky and grateful wow. that that hasn't happened, you know? Um, sure. and have known, known people that have gotten it, but nobody like in my family, like, and the people that I've known have, have made it through. Um, so yeah, just in a very, you know, in a lot of gratitude <laughs> these days. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. How, how could you not be? I, f I find myself, uh, feeling that way too, because everything in my immediate sphere, like in my microcosm of the earth is pretty all right. Like considering- sure which, you know, is the a positive eternally added on to everybody's like, it's fine considering. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, you know, um, most of my family's doing all right. And mm -hmm. like, I'm doing okay. And so yeah. I'm also in a lot of gratitude. Sometimes that's like it, you know, <laughs> like realizing that like, oh, I'm okay is like a huge thing. I also like got my hair cut and I feel very uncomfortable with it. So I'm like messing really? with it a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's you know one what? of those early moments in a haircut where I'm just like, I don't know about this, but I think I just kind of fixed it a little bit. So it looks a little bit better now. I don't know. It's like, it takes a couple of days for me to ever be, oh, yeah. it needs to grow out into its natural state. It know? does. Have you ever gone super short, Julian? Oh my gosh, yes. I when I was a senior in high school, I got a it was actually I dyed it bright red and I got like a Oh yeah. I wanted it to be a mohawk, but my hair sure. was so heavy that it would either be like a greasy like porcupine thing or it could look essentially like a high and tight, but I had a mohawk. Mm. I dyed it pink. Uh I had a nice little rat tail at the back that I would sometimes braid. Nice. I, I I wish I were making that up, but that was I I mean I'm glad you're not. A... <laughs> I can't you know? believe I used to have a braided rat tail. Oh, yeah. braided. Yeah. I mean that's just like <laughs> I was talking to someone the other day who said he had a rat tail in the front and the back and he would tie them together and go skateboarding. Oh, <laughs> These are the days, you know? They're the days. <laughs> um I'm gonna ask you, you like a better. I don't. I'm going to ask you a goofy voting question, but how old were you when you voted the first time? Oh, my God. It was, did I have to do early voting last time, too? Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, that was like a. No, you're good. Like a doom laugh. I feel like I have a lot of those recently. <laughs> sure. Where something is just like, geez, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else can you do if you're not laughing, you're crying. Uh, Absolutely. I was, Gosh, I was 21, barely. Mm -hmm. I had just turned 21. Um, so I'm 25 now. And it was this most recent election. I was like, oh, gosh, how old was I when we voted? I was in high school when uh, it was Obama McCain, Obama Romney. But yeah. like at our, I was talking about this with someone recently at my middle school in Memphis. They had us all do like a school fake vote. Sure. I did that in kindergarten and I voted yeah. for, 
I oh my god, now his name is completely. This is how much older I am than you. <laughs> I voted. <laughs> uh, it was 1988. <laughs> so I voted for. Wow, I can't. I am completely blanking. I can see his face. Dukakis. I was a big Dukakis oh, fan know, know in kindergarten. Know. You know, I think I literally was the only kid in my kindergarten class that voted for Dukakis. You know, like everybody that. else was like Bush. <laughs> you know? Dude, I remember what, what was it? Bush Carey the next year because I have this vivid memory of like. Oh no! This is him. this. That would have been then Clinton Bush. Oh no! Okay, now <laughs> I'm I going. What has happened to, in my brain? Bu- Bush number okay. one. <laughs> I was just like, oh yeah, I remember watching the defeat. Yeah, I, I remember like, Bush, Will oh. Ferrell, all that shit. Yeah, no, I mean the other one. I mean Dana Carvey. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Oh my god. Yeah. I, f- yeah. I feel embarrassed of my of my non knowledge now. But well, yeah, and I wouldn't say. Look, Julian, I'm going to say, don't be embarrassed of your non knowledge. Uh, just acknowledge that you're we're different ages. <laughs> so your experience of that time is probably um, pretty yeah. different. True. And I feel like even when I when I read about like, impo- like landmark uh, presidential campaigns, like as I feel like you know I've been speaking to friends that are older than me or like reading articles or just whole entire friggin' long books about <laughs> uh, reading the stuff. whole thing, reading the whole just like you did in the old days. Um, yeah. <laughs> I find and that I- it slows me down enough to like think before I speak to read right. a book these days <laughs> dude i i've been i mean it's crazy i well i was gonna say the i feel like the when you're filling in memories that you don't have it tends to do like an accordion file and just sort oh, of yeah. press it into all of this like here are pieces of information that i know are related because i can tell you the future and when you are a person who like <laughs> lived through that happening it's so much more vivid and like intricate in a way that I could never replicate in my brain. Um, but also, yeah, man, like, how, for me, it's been a huge challenge to, like, engage. This is, like, the most trite question of all friggin' time, but, like, to engage with someone Bring it on. in like, a friggin' healthy way. Sure. Because there, it's, like, during, I feel like the last time we caught up was like you were in nashville and i was yeah person and it was like a year or more ago and so i think like, so yeah jeez um <laughs> which feels it feels like it was like three months ago dude you straight know? up because like, <laughs> the, like that the, was this past winter right yeah no, that sounds straight right. up because, like, <laughs> every everything seemed to have like enter a kind of like pregnant stasis yeah uh, right as in the united states we started you know like quarantining for real and understanding yeah. the um the magnitude of you know the measures we were going to have to take um because you know it's crazy thinking back in march like me thinking to myself like oh this is probably gonna be over in like <laughs> a month and it's like, yeah nope. just write some um, songs be productive and then we'll be back to everything normal yeah, no, but I mean, uh, as, like, and this, this is another thing that I don't know how I felt about, like, as we develop structures and workarounds and, and methods to, like, accommodate the need for social dis- distancing and quarantining, I am encouraged by how support surprised I am at like human beings elasticity and ability oh, yeah. to cope with those things but I'm also a like a low amount of creeped or concerned that mm-hmm. it is becoming a new normalcy you know what I mean mm-hmm. and it's the same with social media you know like I I felt like I took a good distance from it when there was not like when that was not the only way that I could interact with my friends or <laughs> yeah. talk to the people that I love or and now it's like uh, by necessity I've reimmersed myself in it and especially with it coinciding with so much political turmoil sure <laughs> to say the le- like I don't know it's it's kind of a tricky thing to navigate um yeah I mean it's increasingly virtualized 
Yeah. It's, you know, you, you said something about having like a healthy relationship with it. And I feel like right, right at the beginning, like right before the lockdown happened and the pandemic really hit as a thing, I was like doing a pretty decent job, <laughs> you know, like I yeah. had like this whole, you know, uh, I felt healthy about my yeah. use. And then For there sure. was like, and I was so distanced from the thing. And then there was a real need for information, sure. like a true real need for information around the pandemic and what was happening because we weren't getting it. And um, I wasn't listening to other people, you know, it was like, oh, I have to, I have to communicate. And this is one of the ways that I communicate. And then I got sure. back into it. And then a new uprising of Black Lives Matter happening and being like, mm -hmm. this is where you find the truth of this thing, you know? Sure. And it's just like this trick of like, um, knowing that it is both true and false on that thing, you know? And sure. like, whatever I am looking for on that thing, I will find, you know? So it's it starts with me Please, and uh, the way I go into it because I can find whatever I'm looking for, you know? Um, and so like yeah. today I'm just mad. Like every time I open it, I'm mad. So I'm just like, maybe don't sure. go on it because yeah, you're just gonna I'm... find the thing that makes you mad today. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know? exactly. I mean, and I don't know, you know, I feel like anger being the impetus for activism is a very short lived, like, Oh yeah, it's unsustainable thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I don't want to enrage myself with things, yeah. but I also feel like it is a privilege to make myself intentionally unaware of them. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean there's that there's thing, that balance between that yeah, though. Sure. And yeah. then no, of course, totally. And <laughs> yeah. I was going to say man, I wonder like unprecedented is also a trite word but like this is because it is of though that. because of <laughs> yeah seriously like try i mean we were talking about time like accurate. yeah and like you you know we have these two different experiences of like i don't you know the timeline of presidents we do not have an experience of a global pandemic because it was a hundred years ago so like nope. pretty yeah. much everybody that's alive right now it is unprecedented because they didn't physically experience it, you no, know? So it's seriously. like true. And I mean, that has to, I think about so much, like, not only with voter turnout, but with like, yeah. uh, you know, kind of what you were talking about with like, I will, A, I will find whatever I'm looking for on this thing, on my smartphone, on my device, on my whatever. And then also, even sometimes like, just outside. Is, yeah. When someone's like, like I will, I will stuff. find the guy with the mask down here. When there's like 10 people walking by with their mask on perfectly. Oh, but that, like, that's on me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm looking for that yeah. guy instead of focusing on those other folks. But please no, continue, like, Julian. You're fine. <laughs> you, need, you gotta let it out. <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, uh, like, it, um, one of my friends uh, who is like an organizer in uh, like several capacities was talking to me about the idea of like digital literacy um mm. i feel like this was back when oh man the like it was the black square thing oh uh, yes oh man it yes was, that was such a like the parabolic intersection of like privilege uh like impeding a movement and like, sure yeah good intention furthering it yeah. and i was like oh man it's like such a tragic example i mean like i was like dude i did that on mine you know but right it's like when you when you let yourself be motivated by like the immediacy of kind mm -hmm. of let yourself is kind of derogatory because it implies that you're like weak or you lack conviction if you do it but um sure. when you find yourself motivated by a knee-jerk reaction that is emotional to something on the internet which is so like just ever change like it's so constant and aggressive i feel like i c the fact that i can't like refresh my feed fast enough to like mm -hmm. get ahead of it is like yeah it's like a fire and the, the the feed is like uh it's manipulated you know so Dude, it's that. not happening in a way that is like me being on the street and just seeing the other people that are on the street yeah, it's like the, the street is folding up to me 
and going, Hey, this is what you want to see. So it's like knowing that I'm, I'm in control or maybe not in control, but like I, I, I determine my, my perspective, you know, in certain ways, yeah, sure. like and I, I walk like into it that way, but, but it's also being manipulated towards getting me <laughs> into a, in, into then another place or, uh, uh, like taking advantage of that perspective that I'm coming in with, you know? And I think that black square is like what you're talking about where, cause it is like, and this is not outweighed by the other thing. It's like, you can see how quickly good intentions can be manipulated either actively or passively. Like, oh, I don't know if they did, if they did that to like get an outcome of like suppression, but it that's what it did. So it's like, oh, straight up. it's like, mean, like slowing down and paying attention, which I will say is something that um, over the course of, I would say the last five years, something that I've really begun to do in like my voting practice, which is like a true thing. You know, like I used to just sort of um, go, well, because of uh, I'm from Ohio originally and like um, essentially like my, my like voting instruction and education within my family was like always voting on the defense against like the other side right that sure, like sure. the numbers are against that so just go for it you know and it's sure. like okay well this is a really and eventually you just get really safe and you don't pay attention and you're just doing that thing and you feel that that's good enough and like living in los angeles there are so many different levels of government that are constantly active in every election you know um that that has actually given me uh, a lot more to look at and a lot more to slow down about but also I like to get back to the whatever I look for, I can find, you know, if I am disappointed in something, if I am not happy about the choices that I am presented with, you know, sure. <laughs> if I'm disappointed in a binary system, if any of these things, what I have found is some like joy and freedom and liberation in the fact that there are other things that I can look at, put my time into, talk to other people about and still make a decision about those things. But I don't allow that to determine my belief around voting completely, you know? Because uh, sure, I, I think there's a lot of people that are like, well, I don't, this doesn't feel good. This doesn't feel right. So I'm not going to do it. And like, I get that. That's a legit feeling. There are many, it's a holistic experience is the thing that I, I've sure. really connected to. And that's what I've tried to put like back out into the world. Dude, no, I mean, it's, yeah, I find a lot of people, especially, like, that I talk to have the sentiment of not, you know, because I don't know if there's anybody out here <laughs> that's still, like, completely rebel against, like, at this point, who is, uh, actually, never mind, that's a silly thing to say. I was like, <laughs> there probably are people who, um, like, will not vote because of their unbelief in the, like system the actual mm -hmm. system of evaluating the popular vote and like electoral college and binary par party system being like horrifically flawed like all all of any government sure. but um like i don't know i feel like that's an in uh, like a refreshing perspective to hear because there are so many people who are one step beyond completely rigging their hands of what they believe is an unjust system mm -hmm. and who are almost voting out of a not a even a performative action but just out of a desperate sure. action with no feeling that it matters and i mean i i would be lying if i said that i thought that it was a really efficient and accurate <laughs> and just and fair system sure. that we have here in the United States to choose our president. Um, but I do like, I mean, the same thing has happened to me recently where I've been focusing more on, not even more, I guess that's reductive to say, uh, but I've been engaging more with uh, city, state, and county politics. Yep. And I mean, that's that is when I feel like my vote matters the most. Just I it mean, truly it does. does. <laughs> like, I yeah. Mean, it does. And but yeah, it's difficult to man. You start the odds. Yeah. The, the the odds of, I mean, so I can give an example from my from my experience here in Los Angeles. Um, mm -hmm. 
there's city council here in Los Angeles, and the city council in Los Angeles actually has ha holds more power than the mayor. They control yeah. the budget of the city of Los Angeles, which is the second largest city in the country. <laughs> it's its own, you know what I mean? So like, um, I think it's easy, especially in Los Angeles, a city built around Hollywood and the sort of like, you know, celebrity television media of, of national politics, it's easy to get to forget that Los Angeles is a city, you know, with neighborhood yeah. councils and, um, you know, city councils. And uh, there's a woman running for city council in the district I lived in for seven years. I no longer live in that district. And so I cannot vote for her. However, because city council is so uh, influential on the way this city operates, um, and I believe so much in her platform and what she wants to do, um, especially like she comes from a, a like a she created her own nonprofit uh, called Sela for like um, uh, helping unhoused people like find housing, but also services like not just, you know, throwing money at a problem and building housing and then there's not enough and there's no, you know, sure. um, she has a, a holistic approach to it. Her name is Nithya Raman. Um, she, I can't vote for her. Yeah. But I like phone, phone bank for her. I do outreach for her. I've done shows for her because that will affect me. And this is not selfishly me as a, 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 a person who resides in Los Angeles. And then also my neighbors, despite the fact that she doesn't represent my district. But yeah. bringing that to the city council yeah. will change the whole city council, like yeah. reverberate through the city. So that is something that I can like get into and feel good about the whole process because like you're saying it's like oh I didn't actually and it's also it's designed that way <laughs> like yeah. city city local politics are designed to be like bureaucratic boring not sexy because if you, if they were everybody would be doing it <laughs> and yeah. we would all have like way more say in what was going on and so yeah it's complicated and boring and bureaucratic because then it keeps people at a distance, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But getting involved, even in the small, even just reading, just finding and reading and sorting through voter guides can help you Dude. be so much more connected to what you're actually doing when you pull out a ballot and yes. look at it. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, yeah. And I think it, it's also like, you know, if we want to talk about just like how the binary system breaks down, like closer to the like, levels of smaller government it's like i think i i mean and this is also an emotional maturity thing you know i'm not even gonna pretend like i've been out here <laughs> like <laughs> sure doing this for like yeah but uh just really like thinking about like people on the ballot when you have like three possible like democrats and like three independents and like three like i feel like that makes you look uh when you're looking through these voter guides and when you're looking at people's policies like and how they like i don't want to say market but how they pitch themselves to you as a person like it makes you a lot more discerning of a voter to be able to like see whether or not <laughs> they're like they are actually committed to the kinds of uh, growth or like legislative change that you want to see mm -hmm. in that specific realm and then makes you a more discerning voter in things like, you know, Senate and presidential elections. I mean, yeah, it's hard. I feel like, <laughs> dude, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, and I mean, I think this year, more than any, you know, when I, when I voted in 2016, I had, you know, uh, LA, California is a mail-in ballot place. And there was, I had a lot of like complications, like my ballot wasn't getting there. And I was like, this, this feels odd, you know? <laughs> and so yeah. I went and did early voting instead of waiting for my, you know, hoping that my ballot was going to get there. And there were lines then. Um, and so this is not something that's just all of a sudden happening where sure. like the suppression yeah. levels that we're experiencing currently in this you know lines around the block and all over the country um you know it's been happening since people started voting <laughs> you know sure. only yes. certain people have been allowed to vote in this country over certain courses of time sure. and um you know i that is ultimately the beauty of voting is that you get to do no matter what you get to do what you want to do whether that is you do it or not what you vote for what you um 
but I am I am attempting to look at this as a moment of realizing once again <laughs> how much people that I will never know and have never known um, put on the line so that I can do this, you know, sure. um, yeah. and continue to, you know, if if it was easy, it wouldn't be that important. Um, and all these things remind me of how important it actually is, you know, yes. um, and and bringing that, you know, when I pick up a pen and I look at the ballot, I think is also just another way of centering like, oh, this is like, this is actually like an important thing. Um, sure. And I can have feelings about it. It's a good thing that I have feelings about it because it's important, you know? And yeah. like you said, it's like just setting and forgetting, like, um, you know, like I have a plan. I'm going to make sure I have my driver's license out and check what my signature looks like. Cause I don't think my current signature looks like that anymore. Cause I really I signed that. Wow. Yeah. I I've, I've been reading that like, um, you know, they'll, the, when they check your ballot, they check it against your, your DMV signature on file. And so I'm going to make sure that my signature replicates my signature from eight years ago Jeez. so that it, my ballot counts, you know, yeah. um, black and blue pen. Also some places it's only black pens. Also for anybody that's listening, make sure that before you like post a selfie of your ballot or not a selfie, cause that's not a selfie, but if you post mm -hmm. a picture of your ballot, it could invalidate your ballot. So maybe just take a picture of that little I voted sticker, you know, like just to be Dude. safe. Yeah, that's why I feel like I was going to do that with the recent uh, Tennessee Nashville midterms. I was like, please. Yeah. Vote for better local. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like uh, Congress people. And then I was like, I don't know. I feel it's a bizarre feeling. I mean, not bizarre as in uncommon or like unanticipated feeling to like mistrust the uh, the theoretically objective channels which are supposed mm -hmm. to del deliver your like choice your say in a democratic system to a theoretically objective <laughs> right theoretically objective theoretically <laughs> Yeah, theoretically. This is all, we're all human beings. Like, none of us are objective. Yeah, so. true. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it feels like that is a very defeating thing. And I feel like it's also, hmm, I was going to say, I feel like it's easy to antagonize a process instead of improve it. Like, it's easy for someone exactly. like me to say, yes, there you go. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's easy. I know what you mean. It's yeah. easy to get tired and sick and fed up of the thing, you know, um, yes. it is, it is, it is. Um, and, and I, you know, uh, for many reasons, you know, it feels like, you know, progress goes, you know, one step forward and then 10 steps back. Um, but, uh, the thing I realize is like, we're, we all, that, that is how it goes. What if that's how it goes? Does that mean like I stop caring about anything? No, no. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the focus goes on the other things that we're talking about, you know, like um, somebody like Cori Bush was really inspiring to me this year because um, like she's in the Knock Down the House documentary. I watched that. I was like this woman. And then, you know, I just started because I was I didn't feel great. <laughs> I was like, this is everything is over and da, 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 you know, all this stuff, whatever. And then I just started like retweeting, reposting, retweeting, reposting. And then she won. And I was like, it's possible. <laughs> These things. Yeah are possible. I forgot it was possible. You know, I forgot that it was possible. And one person, well, two people, but one person like commented on my Instagram when I was, I, you know, I just said like Cori Bush won, I, you know, like things, things are possible basically. And this one person said, you know, I voted for her because I saw your posts about it. That's now I say that not because I'm trying to get credit for it because I'm saying one person, <laughs> One you know, like, person. Yeah. that's it. Like, I only have one person, but like one, I, I have no idea how many people overall, but that one person was, was changed towards looking at something new, you know, um, and that is a positive thing. So it's Dude. still possible. It just doesn't look the way I want it to look, you know, I want it to oh look gosh. like what democracy is supposed to look like and, and democracy looks like people in the street. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't actually look the way they have taught us we're supposed to think nope. 
it's no. supposed to look. So it looks like having a plan, a voting plan of where you need to go and where you need to be. And it looks like knowing what your signature looks like and reading mm-hmm. multiple voting guides and being, yes. and going into the booth, like, or sitting at your table. Like, I actually am like, I'm really taking a moment to like sit with it and really sit with what I'm doing so that no matter what happens, I'm going to feel the same way, which is it's always possible. These things are up yeah. for debate. Yes. It's always possible, you know? Yeah. Well, dude, going back to that's such an interesting thing about somebody commenting and saying, like, I I voted in this particular way because you exposed me to this yes. particular knowledge about this uh, pundit and about this candidate. And I want, like, th- it's kind of twofold. Like, I, well, recently, <laughs> um, my stepfather, who's a Trump supporter, I saw that he was reading politics in the English language. And I love politics in the English language by George Orwell. And then I was like, I love that <coughs> book. And in my brain, that's a total, like, I love it because I can use it to like sure. as justification for like all how I am informed about how I read things and how I discern things and we were having the exact same conversation and I know for a fact that this is a person who believes that the news is fake and that mm-hmm. Donald Trump is doing the best that he can for America and that is what he believes sure. um but also like you know it's like when i think about using like i am very cautious and maybe distrustful isn't the right word but i i'm very particular about like the things that i choose to say in the like in the virtual world and i wonder if that is because i think that i would be reiterating the views of the people like because the people that listen to my music i'm think it might be safe to assume that by and large (laughs) sure they might share at least on that one binary issue (laughs) they might maybe uh, fall maybe they might not i mean it's crazy because well but then you know something will change like or not change my mind but uh show me that that assertion is incorrect all the time like i think it is like on the 4th of July, I just said something about re-examining blind nationalism. I didn't even (laughs) say, like, fuck this holiday. Sure. This is a stupid, like, xenophobic colonialist holiday. I was just like, maybe we could re-examine nationalism. (laughs) And then there were, like, three people on my feet just being like, "Yeah, who are y'all? What is the point? But then also, like, that, that surprise of who... Who is this person that... Oh, yes. I mean, I felt like I was preaching to the choir and then, like, they're... You're definitely not. dissenting people, but then, like... No, you're absolutely not. But then it's, like, I wonder... There's so much feeling of futility engaging someone who is so polar, like, like, oppositely opposed to you because of all of the, like vitriol which is not me like condoning Mm -hmm. centrist passivity but it's that's complicated (laughs) whatever okay (laughs) you know i I just there's not time to say it all but yeah welcome to butcher baker candlestick maker (laughs) news at 11 it's 338 (laughs) can we yeah honestly that would would be helpful for me if we broke down the news i think so yeah i mean let's launch Um, this thing hell yeah um but yeah like how do you feel about that like I guess that's not a question it's more of just an observation of you know me being aware of my sure following readership like whatever position yeah position and then like how that informs the way that I bring information because my other big fear Mm -hmm. is like taking up so much space as a person with very limited knowledge you know i feel like there's just every every year i learn more about the world i have oh yeah to say (laughs) i mean that's that's the place to be i know that sounds like counterintuitive but it really it really is 
But I mean, that for me, <clears throat> I was saying way too much and not knowing anything, you know, for a while. And and just sort of doing it because it felt like the right thing to do. And then... Um, sure, yeah. How could it's you not? Just like, it seems like... It, yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know... The, I mean, I've had the same experience, uh, and and being like, wow, I really didn't, I really didn't think that I would. At this point, I didn't think, you know, within the last year, <laughs> I should say, at this point, if you didn't think I was against, like, how did you not? Okay, well, everybody, you know, yeah, everybody, everybody, <laughs> just because something's new to you doesn't mean it's new, you know. But um, sure, and, uh, and and for me, it's 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 a. Uh, it's it's removing the like bluster and maybe not so much the emotion but it's just like slowing down and going that, that's why that's why I connected to somebody like Cory Bush somebody because it was just like I could just see she's very clear in what she what she wants to do you know like what her job is what she sees as and I was like this this is what I this is who I w- want to be you know the way she carries herself uh, the way she communicates her platform her belief system all of it I'm like, oh, this, this is, this is it. This is what I want to do. So it's like, it's slowing down and, 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 and really knowing wh- when, because sometimes, it, and, and that's a constant practice. And like, you only find out that like, oh, maybe I didn't need to say this by saying it. <laughs> you yeah, know? So, definitely. um, and, and like you, we all have to make mistakes, quote unquote, to learn and adjust and do things differently, you know? Yeah. Um, and social media is such, uh, it feels so high stakes, but it's not, you know, um, yeah. it's, it's a place where I will say something. I used to say things and I would be like, well, there goes my career. And it's like, that's not how that works. <laughs> you know, like, it's just not how it works. And so like, it's uh, similar to how I was saying about like actually sitting with the ballot and like looking at it. It's like, uh, we were saying earlier too, about books, it's like, I try to read the whole article <laughs> and like, think about it, it for a, a minute for the you know? people in the back read because the whole article yes sometimes sometimes i'm actually commenting on the headline because the headline is intended to you know whatever sometimes i'm like really? this is a yes. destructive headline but <laughs> i like to read the thing on occasion because they don't want me to read the thing yeah. and so i read the thing and i go this doesn't deserve my time no. <laughs> you know And it's like, what is truly important to me? And am I the person to say this right now? Sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is no. I think especially as a white person, um, that has been my practice for a while, but I'm continually practicing it. And it's like, do I need to say this right now? Or do I need to look and see if someone else said it and I can just push that forward, you know? Sure. Um, No, I mean, there's, and there's, I feel like, and maybe this is just my own particular Mm -hmm. uh, flavor of anxiety manifesting, but I feel like there's a catch-22 on so many things, like, um, even something that seems as minuscule as, like, saying something yourself with, uh, Mm -hmm. like, your assertion and, like, your endorsement of, like, this thought, or retweeting something as a more passive action, or as excusing your self like from Mm -hmm. the narrative uh i mean that's something i think about geez a thousand times a day and it's like but i find this is not always true i mean it's their vitriol exists on the internet but uh like when i come to something in a public forum or even when i come to some of my friends and i say what do what it, what do y'all think about this like i find that even if i am doing something that is if not uh, intentionally like counterproductive to mm-hmm. um like whatever ideals i purport to have like if i'm doing something that is actually like detrimental to like or you know, like centering whiteness in a conversation about the black sure. lives matter like the, it's more of a it's more of a merciful world when I come with less assertions. I feel like Mm -hmm. I used to be a person who loved to like wear like t-shirts that were like fascism (laughs) in 
and like white supremacy and like I'm doing this and when I come to it in a more like I don't want to say fluid but like in a less concrete way like without my preformed ideas of how I'm going to enter this conversation and what I think and what I know is right and how I'm going to destroy this capitalist evil sure. system like then I find myself having a lot more productive conversations and learning how to actually use my platform, my resources, my time, like in a way that is effective and like mm -hmm. contributes to some sort of like real change, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know if that resonates with you. I don't know why. Yeah. No, I, I love everything that you're saying. I mean, to yeah. me, I, that resonates with me too. It's like coming in, because uh, I, I, I relate to what you're saying by like coming in with a fight, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it's like, like I'm bringing a fight to this thing and it's not even necessarily my fight, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> you know, and because I feel like when you have so many, fi like when you have so much baggage that gets, I mean, and this is not even necessarily like an indictment of the fact that I have baggage around being a queer person or being like a woman, uh, like, I bring those things and I bring those resentments to uh, intersectional issues. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And sure. there's so many other ways that I like project my own onto other contexts and I, I totally get it. Yeah. So like, yeah. And I mean, we're, it, we're also human beings, you know, that is like, sure. that's the yeah. human condition to do that, sure. you know? So yeah. you can have the, the sort of theoretical conversation about like yes I, i'm bringing my ego i'm i'm inserting myself into this thing and it's also like that's also the human condition to do it so sure. yes. that being said it's like how do how do i for me all of these actions like all of these things which are actions whether it's on the internet or not it's it's happening it's whatever um <clears throat> it is dropping out of my brain mm -hmm. and going into my heart Sure. That is like the only way any of this stuff is different because, and it's subtle. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, you don't get like retweets and favorites from that. You don't get anything yeah. from that except for coming from here, coming sure. from your heart as opposed to coming from your brain. And, uh, it sounds, it sounds whatever. It sounds whatever to whomever is hearing it and you know, whatever, but like, it's the only way that it works. I've been to, you know, Black Lives Matter Los Angeles. That's the name of the game too, you know, there. And it's like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm listening. I'm listening, you know? Um, and that is a Very continued yeah. practice. And also me coming in and yelling at white people in my life doesn't do it either. Doesn't mean that I just, whatever. But it's like, you practice taking the moments to act the way you're, hearing you know like you yeah. you are paying attention you're listening to the best of your ability so then it's all about acting and you sure. do it to the best of your ability but if it comes from a heart place as opposed to you know the white knight like i'm gonna come in and i'm gonna do this sure. um and then i'm gonna change everything and i'm gonna be i'm gonna be the white person that fixes it it's like nobody wants any of that business. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> like, I don't want any of that business. It's nobody no. wants any of that business. It hasn't worked so far. So it's not going to work <laughs> magically. I'm not going to, that's, I'm like Christopher Columbusing myself, you know, of like, I'm yeah. going to, you know, and, and I, you can't, it just, just doesn't work that way because it is, you know, you said I, these things are small. It's like, it is the small stuff. It is that's, the small yeah. stuff. I mean, there's this like cliche, trite phrase, whatever you want to call it. Um, about like if you want world peace start by smiling at your deli guy but yeah. it is true though because it is the you know the, <laughs> as ashton kutcher and the butterfly effect it is the small things that you do like if i i can bang a drum about whatever about you know queer rights about you know anything black lives matter abortion rights any of these things any of these things and then if i'm a jerk to somebody you know, like who's helping me out? Say it. What does that do? Say you know it what I mean? Again. Sorry, I just like get so hype about that <laughs> lesson. I don't know. And it's like, I, again, I'm not indicting any one specific uh, ideology or like vein of belief, but there, I don't know. I've been a part of a 
and I've held many ideologies in the past that were centered that were your battery died oh no you're fine I'm just gonna drink my tea what's up are we am I back yet yeah you're back dude it's so close I heard the can you hear me I can hear you oh my god can you not hear and me? I know this is like the best part of the whole conversation oh, no. there we can go I, all right oh my god I can hear you and I got a phone call in the middle of that so somebody was like hello hello and I was like hey oh shit <laughs> Oh, the pandemonium of trying to like I love how and I, dude it was a it was for everybody but it <laughs> happened specifically to me too but like when everybody was trying to do the Instagram concerts and it was like it became a meme of everybody just had technical issues and oh, played like one or it's two just songs. A, like that it's was so great thing. it was really humbling and humanizing <laughs> it happens to me all the time too when I'm on a Zoom I don't know if this happens to you but like you'll I'll be listening to somebody and they're like, well, if there's just like one thing that I could leave you with um, out of everything that I've said for this past 45 minutes, I would probably just like whittle it all down to. That's all I would really say about it. Thanks so much. And meeting. And you're like, shit. I love that. It knows no, exactly when to drop out. Um, I'm so sorry about that. Murphy's law. No, it's okay. Our uh, the NSA agent is listening. Sorry, yeah, they, it really thing. is. Um, no, it's. I mean, it's accurate. But yes, you were saying. <laughs> so I yeah, I've been a part of um, like things like m movements or ideologies, or I've been a part of. Maybe I've aligned with you know with thinking that I was, uh, you know, a nineteen year old anarchist, or sure. you know, being straight edge or being part of a uh, like a. Uh, zealous christian community or being um like part of a anything like a socialist organization on campus like i yeah so many of those things i've been a part of that i haven't realized and whose fundamental tenets i do not not agree with now <laughs> but i think that that that's a great little like negative i don't no not i yeah. agree with them Sure. Um, but, like, I think that those things were, like, precluding me from accepting anything less than radical change. Like, not sure. I feel like it, it's already been a thing that's discussed that's, like, you know, it's not productive to scream at your Trump voting. Or, you know what, if you're listening to this and you voted for Trump, it's really not predict, uh, mm -hmm. productive to scream at your Democrat voting sure, family yeah. member. It's Owning the libs this... doesn't actually work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and neither does owning Trump supporters. Like it's actually just a free flowing, like there's no there's yeah. no yeah. actual ownership of anything, you know? Yeah. No, but I mean like and also I think that it is once you recognize that and you know, it's about not othering someone as an individual. Like there are people that say despicable things. We can all agree about that. If, sure. It's just, you know, despicable to me. Maybe I'm despicable to you right now. Whatever. But, like, I think that, you know, once you... It's like a constant transmission of otherness that mm -hmm. is super divisive. Like, when I, as a person who thought at uh, 19 years old that I was just going to be an anarchist. Like, I'm sorry <laughs> I keep shaking my head at that, but it's just like sure, that but... precludes me from interacting with other people who are left of center who I would then, like, think are Hollywood Democrats or, like, people that are, like, comfortable, like, like, just at your average left of center white person who is actually, you know, buying into the capitalist game all along and like that sure that like nullifies so many chances for conversation and it also like disillusions you to a point of wanting to like capsize the ship so much that you can't turn the rudder just mm -hmm. a little bit in like mm -hmm. 
a better direction. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I that was a little that was like very personal to my experience. Yeah, no, I get that. Very I mean, blamed by um, like radical ideology and not having time for the unsexy, the incremental, <laughs> yes, the one like the whittling away slowly. Um, yeah, the, like granite instead of just like you know blowing the whole thing up, right. Yeah, I mean, Jesus flipped the tables too, you know. Like, yeah, hell yeah. but and then he kept talking about other shit and had to keep <laughs> doing it, you know. So it's yeah. like both both things exist, you know. But True. there's room there's yeah. room for both. That's the thing is, mm-hmm. you kind of got to have both, you know. Mm-hmm. I read this thing the other day. It was like you can't you can't plant a flower like you can't take a flower and put it under the ground and expect a flower to grow out of it, you know. We want to like sure. skip ahead. I want to take a flower and put a flower in the ground and get a flower back out. It's like yeah. no, you have to wait for like the bulb and then you have to wait for the right time for that. To, it's like it's all about you know practicing for the moment because you didn't sure. you don't know when the moment is going to be there and Existing is it is it about it. me yeah. making the moment or am i preparing for it when it happens both things are sometimes there <laughs> like I mean, it's why i do stand up i'm making the moment i'm taking an opportunity to say what i want to say and i'm trying to get people to laugh and feel good for an hour or you know however long and um you know i have an agenda i'm allowed to it's my job if, if sure, you don't want to listen to it you can leave no, <laughs> you know yeah. And then the other times, it's not about me, you know? Yeah. It's not the, about uh, me. It's such a, the, like, straight up. Like, well, I mean, and it's difficult because we, like, both of us exist. And also, I want to be considerate of your time. Uh, I mean, so, I want to be considerate of yours, too, but we're having a great oh, conversation. Man, I'm just hanging out. Um, <laughs> Just hanging out and I want to be considerate of like I voted also, so they don't have oh, to go sure, through yeah. too long <laughs> of a time to like edit down. But like, I know. Um, let's just do. We could just do an hour. We got like nine minutes left. Basically. Okay, cool, cool. Um, damn, what was I even gonna say to you? I was gonna say, oh, the thing you said about the flower is so, and also it's difficult. It's to like turn it off when you exist in the public sphere. Um, sure. I'm always weird about using that term with myself, but when But it's you know, true though. You ex- yeah, true. Like when we exist in the public sphere um as an entity and like we can kind of like shape and utilize that for an agenda which we're allowed sure. to do um and which I do a bunch and you <laughs> you do as well. Like I mean same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then like the the waiting for the flower part too is like like forcing an instance and making a moment is almost always I feel like more counterproductive and it's that same question of like does this satiate my need to feel control over something Mm -hmm. that I can recognize is so much bigger than myself Mm -hmm. or is this actually contributing to like the conversation or the movement and like Mm -hmm. whatever uh way that is like available to me you know Mm -hmm. and that's yeah that's hard i think that takes a lot of like ego death to constant ego death constant (laughs) ego death but that's autobiography (laughs) literally what egos are created for you know like yeah yeah and i i would say that you know the 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 the, the lack of ego death is one of the hardest things, but we're all just, you know, we're in collision with each other all the time, you know? Yeah. So it, it's like, a, a lot of people don't want to give that up because it seems weak. Yeah. But to me, it's the strongest thing that you can do. If you, if you can actually look at and go like, oh, I'm making this about me. <laughs> like I'm yeah. truly making this moment about me. And that's all right. I'm a human being, but I know that now. So I got to do it a little different, you know? Yeah. And I mean, honestly, that's the way I'm looking at voting. It's like, am I making yeah. this about me and how I feel about it? Or am I making this about everybody that's, you know, uh, I don't know, been beaten and bloodied and died for this? You know, like, yeah. I, there's some humility there. And sure. also, I don't Seriously. get to tell anybody else what they want, they want to do. I get to take what I have and give it to the best of my ability to somebody else, you know? Dude. And it's all made up anyways, Julian. Like. <laughs> I love, it's such a, 
I, I feel like I do that too, is I will say something like you have just said, something articulate and meaningful and profound. <laughs> and then I will say, yeah, but it all doesn't matter. It's all just so, made up. I mean, we're all living up. in like a dream. It's not, what is reality <laughs> anyway? It's a simulation. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, here's. I mean, I, I do think to... voting is important. <laughs> I all think of voting this, is important. Yeah, I think all of I feel like said, we've been talking. Yeah, voting yeah, is important. You it actually vote. is important. You know, it um, because yeah. it uh, I it is not the only thing. You know, I'm gonna be very honest. I don't think it's the only solution, but it is. Uh, I have like a little logo in my apps here that's like a keychain. I carry a keychain everywhere I go. It's one of the keys of the keychain. So mm-hmm. if I don't if I don't use that key, I don't walk through that door. You know, sure. Um, yeah. And there are many things you can do. There's not many things you have to do, but there's many things you can do to create the change you want to see in the world. But you cannot do it by doing nothing. I mean, if you if you do nothing, that is the change you will see in the world. And if that's what you're into, do it. You know. But if you want to see some change in the world, smile at your deli guy. If you want world peace, start by that. You know, start yeah. by being kind to people around you. And like, it sounds cheesy, but I will tell you it works. <laughs> it actually works. Have I created world peace? Absolutely not. But like, there's like peace in here, you know? And Have that's you like all you cultivated can... a little bit more peace between you and your neighbor? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So... For sure. Did I not scream at him when his dog came into my yard? Absolutely. His German shepherd <laughs> <laughs> came into my fenced in yard. I was like, could you get your dog, please? <laughs> oh, no. You... <laughs> but you it's true. Of your own there. Right. I have a tiny, tiny dog who uh, loves to fight with big dogs. And so I was like, could you come get your dog, please, before my yeah, dog yeah, starts to like fight with him? Freaking out. <laughs> yeah. Aww. Well, I see. Way, way but yeah, man. enact graciousness. In that Did situation. you vote yet, Julian? Did you do your uh, voting? I haven't voted. It... Uh, my friends and I are, like, the people in my pod here in the home that I live in, yes. I think, are all going to go together um, on Friday. So. In person, early, early voting? Yeah. Yeah, we had to submit yeah. my ballot, but yeah. Anyway, I just like got to do what feels right for you, you know. Totally, yeah. I mean, that made me feel optimistic about hopefully like <laughs> other people going out to early voting. Um, Hell yeah! Yeah, absolutely. It's absolutely awesome. Up to, uh, up your comfort level and stuff, but um, with like, well, yeah, what feels right for you to anyway. <laughs> God, yeah, dude. <laughs> I think so much about every single word that comes out of my mouth. I'm just I know, like, I can tell. That wasn't right. Uh, no, yeah, I think you nailed it. Thanks. Buddy. I think it sounded great, you know? I loved well, it. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> um, sharing your thoughts. And Yeah, thanks for uh, inviting me to this. And, like, let's get our, you know, our news show off the ground. <laughs> let's get our news show off the ground. Yes. Uh, Butcher, Baker. No candlestick maker. Here we are. Nope. No. <laughs> awesome. Well, dude, I will uh, sign off of here. So okay, great. To yeah, me too. It to you and it was great uh, talking the to you, voted folks. But um, yeah, thanks. Great talking to you too. Man. Yeah, and, it was uh, great talking to you. Good luck with the future. I don't yeah. know. I'm just like, bet good luck out it's, there. Here's the thing. It's gonna be great it's gonna be great like I know it sounds it sounds so dumb and like whatever if you think it's dumb that's cool but I truly believe in the power of humanity like if there's anything that all of this past six months has taught me is that people care about each other people actually care about each other because I've seen them doing it every day I've seen people putting their bodies on the line because they care about other people yeah period you know period and so that is that is what gets me through a lot of days. There are people who care about each other. And so it might not look the way I want it to look. It may not feel the way I want it to feel. But that is the baseline truth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, uh, great talking to you, Julian. Great talking to you, too, man. I wish you the best. Yeah, you too. <laughs> yeah, right. of course. Bye. Bye. <laughs>